Hey guys, it's me, Mr. Calypso, and today I got a little D&D story for you. To preface this, I run a game of D&D 5th Edition, and I've been doing so for about a year, or a little over a year now. now. This story takes place in that campaign. The story itself involves, for the most part, two of my players, and one of their NPC companions. Uh, Oldar, our party's barbarian, Drake, our party's fighter, and Piper, Oldar's satyr girlfriend and support druid. This story takes place in the great city of Waterdeep, where the players were tasked with sneaking into the home of one of their enemies, a moon elf named Azul Berwain. Their goal was to sneak into Azul's house and trap him in an iron flask. So they formulated a plan, that plan being Oldar, Piper, and Drake would sneak in through the house's basement, which is connected to a series of underground tunnels attached to Waterdeep's sewer system, while the other two members of the party, Tiana and Casimir, would stake out the house and keep watch as they both have the ability to cast Alter Self, which they could use to hide in plain sight. As the DM, I thought this plan was fantastic. Why not send the barbarian, plate mail wearing fighter, and cloven hooved druid on the stealth mission while the rogue and elven cleric watch the house from above? Surprisingly, the first part of the plan went off without a hitch. The stealth group found their way into Azul's basement through the secret entrance hidden within a large cask. Arguably, this was the easiest part of the plan, as the players had already received a tip on a, and a map on where to go in the sewers to reach Azul's manor. However, as they are beginning to exit the cask, Oldar fumbles with his exit, stumbling across the room and into a small wine rack, Oops. knocking a bottle onto the floor and shattering it. The sound of the shattering bottle seeming to have alerted someone uh, above some of the home's occupants, and it seemed one of them, a man, appeared to be coming down to investigate. Thinking fast, Oldar licked some of the wine off the floor and then hopped back into the cask with Drake and Piper, leaving it cracked just a little bit to spy on the man from above. After a few minutes of waiting, they began to hear the man descending the ladder. Some time after, the man reached the bottom of the ladder and the group got a good look at him. He appeared to be a butler or something of the like. This... The man complained while he cleaned up the busted bottle and shortly after finishing, he reascended the ladder, mumbling more complaints under his breath. A little after this, the group climbed out of the cask, this time with a little more grace. However, they hadn't expected anyone else to be in Azul's home, and this threw a wrench into their plans, so to speak. So they had to figure something else out. After a few minutes of nervous deliberation, they had the idea to send Piper up the ladder, wild shaped as a spider, in an attempt to find Azul and keep track of everyone else in the house. They all agreed, so Piper wild shaped and ascended the ladder, disappearing through a crack in the trap door. Shortly after this, they began to hear someone approaching the trap door again. So, Drake and Oldar scampered back into the cask to hide. This time, the intruder appeared to be a maid, fetching another bottle of wine on the shelf. After she gathered her bottle, she returned up the ladder. And after waiting for some time to see if anyone else was going to come into the basement, Oldor and Drake emerged for what they hoped would be the final time. They spoke for a moment, formulating a plan, and then began quietly ascending the ladder. As quietly as a muscular hulk and a six and a half foot tall plate mail wearing dragonborn can be. Surprisingly, they made it all the way to the top without alerting anyone. They slowly opened the trap door and looked around the room. They appeared to be in a small kitchen. Looking around the room, they saw two doors. However, the coast seemed clear, so they just emerged from the trap door. Right next to the trap door was one of the doors, and since it was so close, they decided they were going to attempt to peek into the room through it. So they did, and while they were, the butler entered the room from the other door. They stood there for a second, just looking at each other. And then the man spoke. Who are you, and how on earth did you get in here? Uh, where the entertainment? The entertainment? I don't remember hiring any entertainment. Y your boss hired us. Uh, we're the green idiot and the abomination. Uh, part of our shtick is that we show up unannounced through an unorthodox entrance for this house that entrance just so happened to be the basement. The man then stared at the two of them for a moment. Of course, these two hulking, terrifying looking individuals were not burglars or hired killers. No, they are, in fact, the entertainment. The entertainment the boss had hired without telling anyone and who apparently entered the manor through the catacombs completely by surprise. 
Of course, their whole argument was completely ridiculous, if not completely insane. So insane, in fact, that it was kind of believable. But he needed more proof. Then the man spoke again. So, the green idiot and the abomination, huh? Yep. Which one of you is the green idiot? I am. But you're red. That's a part of the joke. Why is he the abomination? I mean, just look at him. He looks like an abomination to me. <laughs> All right, then. What do you do? What's your act? I can punch him really hard in the face. Then Old R proceeded to punch Drake in the face. Wait, what? Now, something important about Drake. He wears an ancient suit of magical plate mail that has been passed down his family from father to son for generations. This armor provides Drake with many defensive perks. However, it comes with one significant drawback. When Drake is struck, he is forced to make a wisdom saving throw or be sent into a blind rage, attacking everyone around him. Well, Oldar hit him. And as advertised, he hit him quite hard. Thus, Drake was forced to make the save. He rolled. And he failed. Then Drake goes into a rage and begins attacking Oldar. Punching him and kicking him repeatedly. All the while, Oldar is attempting to play this up as part of the act. And this goes on for a few seconds when Oldar grapples Drake and manages to toss him down the trap door and into the basement. He then closes the trap door and sets on it. Then he spoke. <sighs> see? All part of the act. <laughs> as you can see, we take our act very seriously. So seriously that the abomination occasionally gets a little too into it. Then, as Oldar was speaking, Drake used his fire breath on the trap door, burning it in a large portion of the ladder and floor. <laughs> there he goes again. Excuse me, please. I think we might have to reschedule it. That's okay. Oldar then opened the charred trap door, jumped down onto Drake, and then proceeded to beat Drake to unconsciousness. After knocking him out, Oldar drug him over to the cask, then the two of them proceeded to leave the estate. Oldar, leaving a platinum piece and shouting above, Sorry for the damages. Hope this covers it. Oldar and Drake made their way out of the catacombs and found their way back to the lookout team, where they discussed what they were going to do now, now that their first plan had failed. It was then, during this conversation, that Oldar remembered Piper, and the fact that she was still wild-shaped, uh, hopefully, and within the building. Realizing this, he quickly made his way over to the front door of the manor, while formulating a plan to get her back. He then knocks on the door and waits. A few moments later, the man answers, a look of disappointment on his face. Oh, you again? Uh, hey, I think I left my pet spider in there. Your what? My pet spider. Uh, don't worry, she's not poisonous. Do you mind if I go get her? Uh, I, I don't think so. Well, uh, could you get her for me? Uh... Don't worry, she's harmless, I swear. Uh, she should be in or near the kitchen. If I go get her, will you please go away? Yes, very much so. Hi. The man then went to fetch Piper. After some searching, he finally finds her, and then proceeds to attempt to collect her. And then, Piper bites him. Contrary to Oldar's former statement, Piper was neither harmless nor non-poisonous. The man was forced to make a con save, which he promptly failed, and so, he dies. Piper bit him, and he dies. Right there. Right in front of the maid, which just so happened to be his daughter. Rather immediately, the maid began to scream and call for help. Oldar, hearing this, and in a very disappointed tone to himself, says, Oh, give me a break. He then rushed into the house, shortly followed by a group of civilians, and Tia, as well as the rest of the party. Oldar then ran over, swiftly snatched up Spider Piper, and grunted disappointedly. And while he was thinking of a way to explain the situation, Tia came to his rescue and exclaimed that she should be able to revive the poor man. Tia exclaimed, I should be able to bring him back, but, but I'm going to need a diamond. She then looked at Oldar with a, hey, I'm giving you a chance to get out of here, look, and said, can you get me one, Oldar? I'll pay you back for it. Oldar did so. He returned, and Tia casted the spell, bringing the poor man back to life. After doing so, the man's only words to the party were, Not poisonous, huh? Shortly after this, the party promptly left the house. Some time after, they actually returned to the manor and captured Azul in a more or less competent way. 
mostly involving the iron flask and a busted window. But anyway, you guys, this was one of my more entertaining stories from my more recent sessions. And I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if, uh, if any of you have had any stories similar to this or any funny D&D related stories, I'd love to see them. Just leave a comment down below with them or whatever. And yeah. Anyway, you guys, thanks for watching. And I will catch you in the next video.